What's up? Welcome to the Existential Stoic Podcast. Do you wish you could start over? Are you sick of your life? Do you hate your day to day? Is it just miserable? Well, today you're in luck because we're going to talk about how to start over. I'm Danny here, my buddy Randy. What's up, Randy? Yo, Danny. Have you ever started over? <laughs> Dude, you know, I actually, when you when you suggested this title, to me, it occurred differently because I've sometimes oh. had some occasions in life where basically life smacked me upside the head and I had to yeah. start over. There were a couple of times where I, when I chose to, but there were a couple of times where I had no choice and I just had to go with it. Oh, good. Yeah. So look at, I think, it, you know, I think starting over is like that, though. It tends to be the situation. It's like you both have to because you kind of don't have a choice, but it's also good for you. And you don't often see that until later, you know. Oh, dude, especially when you don't choose to. It's good for you in the long run, but it never feels like that in the beginning. Oh, it sucks in the yeah. When you're doing it, it's terrible. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Well, we each got three tips. I'm going to start. My first one is say no. Like we usually say yes. And yes is a good thing to do. Like for people, you know, you're trying to find new things, whatever. You're trying to get promoted, all that. So you say yes, yes, yes. But you have to, if you want to start over, you have to say no to things. You have to assert the the actual value of your no, your autonomy, your freedom to make choices and start empowering yourself to make choices again. So saying no is a great start, I think. No to obligations, no to whatever until you yeah. can find out what you need to do. You know, that one's a great one because a lot of people get get stuck into lives that they don't like because they say yes to just too much stuff. They don't have they're too spineless to say no. And so well, you know what it also yeah. is too. I think the same thing that happened to us when we were younger. Like you don't even know either, so you trust everybody around you, and you keep saying yes to their suggestions, you know, and then you mm-hmm. end up living something you don't want to live. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, just as as a counterpoint to that, when I did recently have life hand me a start over, and <laughs> I needed to start over, I actually needed to say yes to a whole bunch of stuff just to get out of my room and out of my head so no that's fair yeah yeah sometimes you have to to get moving again yeah if you're on the opposite side of that yeah yeah so uh my first one for how to start over is give up the past so i mean how often do we find ourselves arguing with the past thinking that we're still going to change it however many years later (laughs) like what's done is done and no matter how many times you have the argument no matter how good your argument is the past is still the past you can't change that it won so yeah. yeah, so like whether you chose to start over or whether you're starting over on your own accord, whatever happened already happened. Just accept that it happened and then move on from there because you can mess your life completely up and you can turn it around and get right back together. You know what I like about that one too is like the implication that both the past could have been good or bad. You need to forget it either way. Because we can also like, you know, I know plenty of people who like they live in the past because it was, you know, they thought it was better than now and it prevents them from moving forward. Just like a bad past experience can also prevent you from moving forward, right? Because you keep questioning it and running through your head. So I think that's, yeah, it's a great one. You got it. If you want to move forward and start over, you have to just forget about the past and move on. Yeah, bingo. Just think of the prototypical high school star quarterback. who That's like the <laughs> yeah, best right? moment of his life. And the rest of his life, he just lives off of that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one. My second one is actually be selfish and don't be afraid to be selfish. You know, I think this is something I had to learn, you know, as I got older. But I think, you know, we tend to we tend to listen to other people. We tend to live, try to live up to their expectations. We think we'll be happy if we do that. But at the end of the day, if you're starting over, you get the opportunity to start over. Be selfish and actually do what you want to do. And things will be so much better. I know personally, like the last time that was years ago and I really struggled with depression for the last time. You know, starting over, I had to be selfish. And when I was, things had just gotten better and better and better. And I think that's, you know, it's crucial. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it crazy? I I can relate because it was those times when I had to, like for pretty much my whole entire life was built off of this model. You have to suffer and do stuff you hate now because in the future, it's going to be good for you. And yeah, just, my whole entire life until I was like 35, that was my mental model. And it's just like, it was broken and very, very broken. And yeah. I got, I got significantly depressed too. And once I recognized that that model was broken, like once I got everything and did everything that it was supposed to be, and I was the worst off I've ever been, I've been like, okay, fine, let's try something different. Let's try going after stuff that I enjoy. And it's just like, yeah. Hey, could life be this yeah. good? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's funny. It is funny. And then you end up doing things, too, because you're unhappy. So you end up doing things to distract yourself or hide from it, you know, throughout that whole process. And it's like it takes a while to realize it, though. But once you do, things just get better. Mm -hmm. They really do. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, so my next one for how to start over is find out what you hate and then do the opposite. So this is an interesting one, and I heard it from some book that I can't remember, but uh, it's really interesting because, you know, people are like, especially all these like uh, these personal life coaches and they're like, find your passion, do what you love. And most yeah. of the time when your life sucks, everything looks gray, you know? There's like hey, no no interest, dude, at like, all. I have no experience. Yeah, it's like, what do you want to do? I want to sleep more, and it's like that's <laughs> you know. So like this was really interesting because oh, I think it was a book called Homeless to Billionaire. It was a story about a guy who was homeless and living on a beach or something like that, and then eventually built a real estate uh, um, huh. to a billion dollars Empire. or something like that. Empire. There we go. Hmm. Yeah. So he he basically. <laughs> All the people that work for his company, he encouraged them to find what they hate and then do the opposite because that is such a strong driver. Stuff that you hate, that'll give you the anger, the drive to do things. So if you know specifically what you hate, and I'm going to guess a lot of people are very clear on what they hate, well, yeah. write that down and then figure out what the opposite is and go do that. You know what? That is a really good one, too, because I remember, like, I know for myself, like, when I was trying to decide what, how to change careers, like, one of the things I really looked at was what I hated about my current career, right? And, like, not, I, and to be fair, not everything about it that I hate, but enough of it that I just realized, like, it's not going to work. And that was, like, focusing on that aspect of it was a real eye-opener for that it's not going to work for me, and I need to do something else. And I think you're right. Like, it's a good way to kind of, instead of trying to stay positive, focus on maybe what you like about it, because that'll keep you in the wrong thing for too long. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a good idea to just focus on what you hate and go do the opposite. That's good. Uh, my last one is commit to change. So this is a hard one because I know, like, especially like when you have when you're forced to start over, it can be really difficult because you might be dealing with like, a lot of emotions. But like, if you want to start over, you have to also commit the time. And it could be an hour a night, it could be 10 minutes a day at first, whatever it is, commit to making changes in your life, especially small changes. And those will add up to much better outcomes and like even if it's like you know committing to starting waking up 10 minutes early so you can journal and self-reflect to figure out what you want to do that'll be enough to get started just commit to it dude that's a brilliant one because i totally underestimated will smith's story about building the brick wall how like his dad <laughs> knocked down a brick wall and then him and his brother had to build it one summer and it was like a huge wall and they're like we're never going to finish it and they just laid brick after brick after brick and eventually they built a wall and I was just like, oh, that's a nice story. Then I actually started seeing that stuff in my life, like where the things that I did on a regular basis, just consistently every day, every day, every day. And that's what I, I also like what you said, even if it's just five or 10 minutes, because for, yeah. for most things that are important to me, I try and make it a daily practice. And then it doesn't even matter if it's only for 30 seconds. Like, let's say I had this goal of reading a book or whatever every day, even if it's just one sentence. That way it got done for the day. And if I miss a day, don't make it two days. You know, simple as yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just committing to it. Yeah. It makes all the difference. But dude, it adds up. It's so crazy. If you've never done something like that in your life, oh, the yeah. difference yeah. you'll see from like just small daily gains. And just the positivity from any changes too you make when you commit to it. Like it just feels good to start seeing that your life is changing. You know, that's mm -hmm. always helpful too. Yeah, bingo. So my last one for how to start over is have faith. So this is faith in the future. And uh, Tim Tim Ferriss did a uh, a podcast where he interviewed Wim Hof, the guy behind the breathing that I talk about every week. And constantly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so at the end of the episode, so I mean, if you want to listen to the episode, listen to the episode. If you don't listen to the last five minutes, because at the end of the episode, he asked Wim, who's Right now, very, very successful in his life. He's done a lot of great stuff. And he's like, if you could tell your 30-year-old self one thing, what would it be? And he said, have faith. And here's a guy who, when he was younger, his wife commits suicide. He, had, he was like severe depression from that, had to take care of his family through all this. And then out of that, built up a big like breathing and meditation empire. And 
he just says have faith and like i don't know it's understated but if you just believe in the future it's probably going to turn out all right you know i like that one too i think i think you have to believe in the future and you have to have faith in yourself and like <clears throat> if you do things will work out because you know if you're negative if you don't believe they're not going to work out like that's just the truth like if you don't have that positive positivity or that or that that ounce of hope nothing's going to change because you don't believe it will change and so you're going to actively work against yourself so i think having faith is just crucial because like otherwise nothing's going to get better Dude, and here's another thing that i got from him saying have faith so like i said here's a here's a guy who's super successful if you look at him now you'd be like wow he's just like exuding confidence all of this he's telling his 30 year old self who didn't have faith yeah have faith like that just hits me really hard because I know there are times when I don't have faith. And like, I no, think, I... I think what would my 67 year old self tell me to have faith? Like imagine that person saying, Hey, it's all going to work out. Everything you ever wanted is going to happen. Just have faith. Yeah. Well, it's hard for us to see too. Cause the time, you know, between now and whatever those changes are, sometimes it's a while and it's hard for us to sort of think that through We're we're so focused on how we feel in the present moment. Right. We don't think about, you know, the long-term effects. It's a good one. I like that. Mm. So there you have it then. How to start over. Hopefully this will help you if you do need to start over. Check us out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Please like, share, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. We'll be back later this week with a full-length episode. Until then, though, later, Randy. Later, Danny. <laughs>